Hey guys, I usually try to plan my videos out a little more, but today I'm actually trying to bake something. And I've got these two with me and someone asked me to compare them. So I was like, you know, let's roll with the moment. Very different lifestyles. How would I compare a mini macaw and a monster macaw? I say monster with love. Stick around and you'll find out. In the meantime, if you wanna get blissed out um, and you want to blissed out about parrots, um, my mission is to help anyone who wants to increase the bond with their parrots so that they don't rehome or rescue. So if you love learning about parrots and that's your goal as well, you're in the right place. If you think it's loud, you're used to hanging out, you know I have over 20 species. Like I said, I usually don't do my videos here. Hopefully I can do it. Ah. Um, thanks for being here, let's get started. All right, so I had started to plan this video out, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is the difference in lifestyle. Because when it comes to these two macaws, their needs are so different that you can really think of a hands macaw, I don't know about the other mini macaws, uh, but a hands macaw, you can really think of her almost as a really big conure. As a matter of fact, my golden conure is bigger than my mini macaw, my hands macaw. That means that this macaw needs a lot of space and while this macaw needs a lot of attention, uh, my Catalina macaw really needs the attention. The bigger the bird, the bigger the needs. That's not exactly 100% true, but there is a lot of truth to it. So while Emma likes to do tricks on my shoulder, she's showing off her pretty wings. Pretty wings. Um, and Kailani can do tricks too. They can both talk, they can both do tricks, they're both smart. Um, Kailani, right now she seems quieter and calmer. There's a little bit of truth to that. This one is a little more high strung. But um, I just feel like with a big macaw, you know, her cage is so big I can fit in it. And we like to take her out back so she can fly around. Whereas this one, not literally. Any cage will do. I don't really mean that. And she could fly around the house. Ah! You know, I mean, you just need a lot more space, a lot more food, a lot more nuts. This one just needs a tablespoon of nut fat or seeds. This one needs half a cup of nut fat every day. So, um, very different needs as far as that lifestyle goes. Um, hi, Kainani. Hi, Kailani. As far as demeanors go, and as far as um, a lot of a lot of things like their lifespan, the bigger, the longer the lifespan's going to be. Uh, the demeanor, boy, you know, having to call them a macabre really is a little easier, and they both really engage, but they both really would do better with a partner at home as well. So while I'm going to say that a hands macaw is going to be quieter, and she is, it doesn't mean that she's a quiet parrot. So if you're in the market for a macaw, I would recommend having a outdoor aviary where they can be loud during the day. They're going to be loud and active basically from sunrise to sunset. Um, and they do take a nap in the middle of the day, but otherwise, they're not loud all day. Like, now you can hear my house actually got kind of quiet. What a nice thing. Um, but, you know, any parrot, they're going to be active, and therefore, if they're going to be making noise, it's from sun, sunrise to sunset kind of thing. But then, you know, then there are parts of the day where they're mellow. Now, um, what else do I want to compare? The vet bills are basically going to be the same. Some of my vets charge more for a bigger bird when they um, see, give an examination to a bigger bird. But I don't think they're all like that. Generally speaking, those kinds of things are going to be the same. Now, um, I think another lifestyle difference for you that's significant is at about 150 grams versus 1,000 grams, this one makes a much 
much, much bigger mess. There are constantly nuts all over, nut shells all around her cage. Be nice. You want pets? You want pets? Yeah? Be gentle. Um, whereas Emerald, my hand's macaw, you know, I can't even tell where she's been. Sometimes there's some poop where she's been, like, on the floor. Uh, it's easy to clean up after. Kailani doesn't poop as often because big parrots don't poop as often. But when they do, they are bigger poops. So, um, it's not the poops, although that's also significant. But, you know, um, for your lifestyle, a bigger macaw is a lot messier. And they obviously go through a lot more food. I mean, I think it's probably fair to say that she goes through uh, five times more food than Emerald. So, as far as the cost goes for toys, um, for food, for cleaning up, this one's definitely significantly different. If you've ever had, um, I'm guessing, a, a Conner, like a blue-headed Conner, uh, or one of the larger Conners, Emerald's probably very similar. I really think, like we've compared her to a Conner before. Uh, cranky one, cranky. Cranky. <laughs> uh, they're both great. Um, I think that if it's the lifestyle you want, you understand that you really should have two because they'll still bond with you, but then they'll let you cook in the kitchen. Whereas if you only have one, they don't let you cook. Now, they could bond together, but they'll have none of that. So, they don't want to do that. Um, so as long as you understand that I really, like I always am a proponent of having two of a species. And you know, I used to have two hybrid macaws, that was fine. But she's too small. You want a, the species to really match, you know, you're, you're matching size, temperament, uh, eating habits so that you can give them the same food, things like that. So don't do that. So um, as long as you understand that this, that either of these macaws is a bird that needs a lot of attention. Yes, they talk. Yes, that can be kind of fun. Um, when I have something, Kailani will say that she wants some. We'll see if she does it right now. Hey, look at this. You want some? She's like, why would I ask? I could just take it. All right. So, you know, having a bird like this, it's just, you know, really more demanding, but um, if you're comfortable, a lot of people compare birds to children. If you're comfortable with having a pet that is really more than a pet, they're more like companions because they want to be on you. They want to be in your business. Um, they, they don't want to just sit back like from their cage and watch the world go by. They want to engage. They want to partake. They want to share their life. And when you have a bird this big, sharing your life, it's far more... I say in your face because I think that's a good way of, of saying, um, you know, like my cats aren't in my face. Maybe sometimes they come and want me to pet them, but you know, the cats, they take care of themselves. They go off, they do their own thing. Birds aren't like that and macaws certainly aren't like that. And you can see. So this unplanned video, I, I mean, I had been planning to do this video, but I'm, I'm trying to bake biscotti. <laughs> And, and this is kind of how it goes. It's okay. I know. There was a sound. It's okay. This is kind of how it goes with parrots. They're like, no, you don't want to bake something. You want to be with us. So if you understand that that's the lifestyle you're signing up for and that this one, it's even more so. The costs are higher. Do you see that? She, in some ways, she's more demanding. She has the ability to just kind of not ask for what she wants, um, but kind of state it more than a smaller parrot. The other thing that I think is a really significant difference, and I'll leave you maybe on this note, is this is a bird that Dr. K on um, Dr. K's emergency show, uh, she's an exotic vet here in Florida. She describes macaws as being so big and having such a big beak that they intimidate people. And you know, with a beak that can break your finger, I mean, really do damage, they can open a coconut. It is intimidating. This is a parrot that can bite you and hurt you. Um, I don't know if she could break your finger. I don't think so. 
she could do damage, but I don't think she could break your finger. Um, so this is a parrot that is more like, like I was saying, more like a conure. And that's a really big difference. Intimidating, not so intimidating. Biting, sure. <laughs> you can see this one wants to bite too. But I would say um, that's probably one of the most significant differences after like the, their food bills um, and their ability to demand attention is the fact that with the macaw, you really need to either do some training. Mwah! When I have her by the beak, then it's easy to um, grab her. <laughs> Sweetie, come here. You know what? My arm's getting tired. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's she's so big. Uh, at a thousand grams, she's about two pounds. Come here, Emma. Okay, just go on the other side. Yeah. So um, you really have to have your ability to be the um, top of the pecking order in the bird world down. You have to either do training with your macaw or something because this is a bird, I mean, like my parrot lets at 30 grams and a couple inches, they they get to biting and when they bite, um, it, it can be easy to not want to take them out of their cage. That's a bird this small. Like those birds are like the size of her beak. So when you have a bird this big, I would say that's the biggest thing. One reason macaws are one of the most rehomed parrots is because they're intimidating because they're so loud, because they're so demanding, their needs are just so much more pronounced. This one, the needs aren't, in comparison, they're not so pronounced, but they're pronounced. And your hands macaw can drive you crazy. So, you know, just really be aware you're getting into two species that are not calm, mellow, chill. They're the opposite of that. You could see. Um, my cape parrot's right there on the fridge. If I could show her to you, I would. She's sitting. Hi, Macy. Hello, you're so mellow and quiet, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, you gonna feed me? Yeah. Oh, you want pets? Oh, what a sweet girl. Thank you. You're gonna feed me, thank you. You can't hear her, she's mellow. She doesn't make noises, she doesn't freak out. Earlier, you heard a noise and Kailani freaked out. So these are not chill parrots. If you kind of want like high energy, these are high energy. I hope that helps if you are looking at getting a macaw because if you get a macaw, like I said, I don't want you to leave home or rescue necessarily. I want you to be able to have the most blissful experience because the bond with both of these is amazing. The bond with her is incredible. I love hugging her. This is the only parrot I can hug because no one else is this big. Watch, I'm gonna hug her. Um, because she's so big, I kind of feel like, you know, in some ways you can read her face more easily too. Hey, Emerald, can I, can I have you fly off so that I can hug Kainani? Off? Emerald, off? So because I can read her face, it's like, you know, we can really just share our lives more. Oh, oh, hug, hug. Mm. We've created this bond. She's, you know, she's got years with me. And so... I want you to know that like it, she's macaws are big they're difficult they're challenging and they're blissful they're fantastic it's just a bird that you have to be well willing ready and able to really put a lot of money into because they go through chores like nothing food um time energy okay I hope that really really helps you if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give me a thumbs up if you love my videos and you want to connect more um, you can always join the membership. The description's down below in, sorry, the link's down below in the description. If you love the video and it helps you out, you're always welcome to do super thanks. Thank you guys for doing the super thanks. I'm always really touched when I see that I've gotten a super thanks. Not that I can tell very well. I wish YouTube had a better way of reporting it to me, but I really, really appreciate the support because it is my mission. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next blissful video. I am now going to try to bake. Catch you next time.